Goedemorgen, ik ben Maaike Kramer met Jubilee Campaign Nederland en ik spreek vandaag met Lauren Bethel, international consultant in de strijd tegen vrouwen en kinderhandel. Lauren, how did you get involved with trafficking? Um, I am a pastor, I was a teacher and I uh, was in Thailand studying the Thai language and every day I had to walk down a red light district street in order to get to language school. And so I was saying, what on earth is going on here? Why is this country known for prostitution? So I started researching the whole situation. I started hanging out with the women on uh, Pat Pong Avenue in the red light district and teaching them English. They needed um, English skills. And I did that so that I could just hear their stories and find out why they were there. And in the midst of that, um, God just did a huge thing in my heart and said, you really need to help the church to address this issue because there were very few Christians who were involved with the women and offering them alternatives. And so um, God, in a very mystical and amazing way, um, uh, opened the door for me to start working with a project in, in the north of Thailand called the New Life Center, um, where I started um, ministering with women at risk, uh, girls who were at very, very high risk of ending up in the sex industry and being victims of trafficking. And then we also started facilitating girls to come out of prostitution as well. And so um, it was a real a God process, truly speaking into my heart and leading. Wonderful. Yeah. It seems to the casual observer that no matter what we do, no matter what's done at the international level or at the national level, that traffickers still find ways to bring women to where they want them, where they can use them, where they can exploit them. You've been involved with this for 23 years, so you've seen the process, you've seen uh, results. Um, in your opinion, does it matter? I mean, mm -hmm. does it have a purpose? I mean, should we continue? Mm, absolutely. You know, when I started uh, in Thailand, it was like, oh my goodness, people would say, well, what you're doing is just a drop in the ocean. And I thought, well, but it matters to that drop. You know, the story of the starfish, you know, a man throwing starfish on the beach. And, um, you know, there's millions of them, and, but it matters to that one starfish that he saves him. And it matters to each woman that we are able to prevent or to in some way help to have a new life. Um, yes, the situation is endless, but from those 23 years ago, when I started working with one person and a second person and a third person and other people were feeling called to do the same, and then I saw that the media started to take an interest in the issues, and then I saw that governments were beginning to get involved because their attention was raised by the media, and now I really do feel that there is a wave of um, an, a, a real opening of God's Spirit calling people into ministries like this. And if it all is only a ministry to one person or two people or three people to either prevent or to restore a life, it matters. And God is in the business of individuals. And so it matters even if it's just one individual we're working with. But I truly believe that there is a movement of God's Spirit on this world that is really dealing with this issue of trafficking, which I call the exploitation of vulnerability. It is the exploitation of vulnerability. It's the exploitation of vulnerable populations, either economically or people who have an abusive background, or even young women with very low self-esteem who will be um, enticed by men who offer them all kinds of things in order to do what they want them to and then find themselves in very coercive positions. So um, it matters. It does matter. And one person is going to be able to make a difference that they won't even be able to recognize the, the end result of that. It's good to hear. Good to remember. Yeah. You've dealt 23 years with many women. When you meet them for the first time, what are they dealing with? What are the consequences of the risk experiences that they've had? Mm. You know, every woman has a different experience. There have been women that I have met on the streets and and we those of us who who walk the streets and meet the women in prostitution, the the first message that we're trying to impart to them is that you are special. You are a unique and valuable individual. You are just you are so loved by God and just to help them to have that understanding and 
and share with them an unconditional concern. No matter what they're doing, they are cared for. And so um, and their reactions are very different. Usually, their responses are very positive. Um, in some cases, I've had women say, oh, well, you're obviously a Christian. Would you please pray for me? Um, and so we'll start a prayer ministry. And prayer works amazing wonders and miracles. Um, even that simple act. In other situations, I'll say, oh, I'm here just because I'm supporting my family. Would you help us to help me to find another kind of job? Of course, not every situation is met positively. Sometimes the women just accept our friendly gestures and and say, you know, get out of my way. I've got to uh, keep working. And we'll say, bless you, you know, and, and we'll just continue to pray for them. So each... Um, but the, the message we always want to bring is that they are precious and beloved in God's sight and um, that, that they are worthy. And, and some women, when they realize that, then God can do an amazing work and use the organizations um, that are working with the girls to really bring restoration and healing. A big question. Yeah. You're a pastor. So I have a big question. Uh. If God is just... Why does this happen? Uh, we live in a sinful world. We are fallen people. And um, we are sinners saved by grace. And there is an evil in this world. And, and human trafficking is evil personified. It is evil in human flesh. Um, and so what we it really is a, a spiritual battle that we are going into. And we really have to be prepared for that. Um, God is just and God can intervene and God can use God's people to um, to affect change in this world where we know that we've seen it um, so yes these things do happen um, but but God is is at work of at restoration and healing and and combating evil you said it was a spiritual battle and you said that God is moving and that he can use his people. How can he use them? What can we do? What can the churches in Holland do to, to help and to contribute to combating human trafficking? <clears throat> I always say the first place you start is with prayer. You start praying about the situation. Um, every time you pass a red light district, you, you just pray into that red light district. You pray for each one of those windows and you see those young women, you see the men going in as precious and beloved children of God. They are, they are precious in his sight. God died for them. Jesus died for them. Uh, not just for those of us in the church. Jesus died for those people in that red light district. And we are, we have a responsibility to be praying for them and to be showing love and concern. Of course, we have to know about the situation. So awareness raising, finding out as much as possible about what is going on, who is doing what, what are they doing. Um, one project, the Scarlet Cord in Amsterdam, is always in need of women to come alongside those who are choosing to leave prostitution and be their buddies, to be a buddy, to be a kind person, to get involved in the lives of um, young women uh, who, who just need someone with them to walk that road with them. Um, awareness raising, uh, contact, contacting the organization, seeing what they need. Each one of the organizations needs um, different kinds of things. Uh, contact De Haven in Den Haag. And the Scarlet Court has organizations all over um, the country, has, has branches. Um, there are ways of plugging in if, if people decide that they are going to get involved. Thank you very much, Lauren. Wij zijn vandaag iets meer te weten gekomen over mensenhandel. Maar belangrijker hebben we gehoord dat wij allemaal een rol kunnen spelen in de strijd tegen mensenhandel. En daarom wil ik jullie allemaal oproepen om betrokken te raken bij de campagne, maar ook bij het werk in Nederland tegen mensenhandel. Dankjewel.